All right, so we're going to first go over the answers of the questions. And then after we cover the questions, we'll, um, I want to point a few things out about cycles and washer operation. Whether it's mechanical or computerized washer, um, a lot of the cycles themselves are, are the same. And what I mean by that is fill, agitate, drain, spin, and so forth. The cycles are the same. It's just how we control it, whether it's a mechanical timer or control board. But the first question is how many cams are found in this washer timer? So we have to go to the chart for this. And how many cams are there? 16. 16. And if you look here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 15. But because we have 0, that made it a 16 cam and not 15 cams. So that's cams are there. And one thing that some of you uh, were having issues with was when it talked about colors of wires on a switch. Remember, this here, and it goes all the way down. I'm just highlighting a part of it. That is a cam on the timer. And a cam on the timer has three switches. It has a middle or center. It has a top and a bottom. So one cam has three terminals that connect on the back of the timer. So if I got 16 cams, I'm going to have three times that many terminals on the back of the timer. Now one thing about a timer is the timer itself cannot handle 16 cams on one side. The timer, uh, let me show you that real quick. Uh, let me just get a picture here. So if we look, let me see if I can find a good picture here. And of course, when you're looking for it, okay, here, here we go. Let's zoom in on, on this here. Okay. So in most washing machines, like if you look here, there's a, it's hard to see, but right there's a circular curve and that's where the actual timer motor is. That's the motor that advances the timer. And I didn't want to do that. So if you look, the pins are there and there's three rows of pins right there. The bottom, when we're looking at this timer, the bottom is the row that's always closest to the motor. And when you only got like one section where plug is, then the bottom is here, the top is the furthest outside and the middle is in the middle. So if we looked at this timer here though, you can see that this timer had a set of terminals here. Here is your motor, this is not the plastic one, the motor is, well, here's your motor, but there's another set of terminals here. When you see a timer like that, usually the cams on one side are all the odd numbers and the cams on the other side will be all the even. So this one would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, whatever. And then this one would be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay? So this row here is the closest to the motor. That's the bottom. That's the middle and the top. Well, the top is, I keep going to this picture here. Uh, the top. The top is the outside rows. So it doesn't matter which way I turn the time around, the top is always the top. Because there's a cam or a circular, uh, touch screen is, I didn't even touch it. There's a circular cam in there, and so everything closest to that cam is also known as the bottom. Okay? So, let me go back to presentation here. So we have a top, middle, bottom. Right? Mm -hmm. So getting to that, if we look closer here, this says top and this says bottom. And if I follow the top down, that's going to be the black wire. So 
the, the top one on this here is going to be black. And if I follow the bottom one down, that's going to be violet. Mm -hmm. Okay? But this black and white here going horizontal is the middle color. So that black and white right here, right here, is the middle one, black with white. So all of these are the middle terminals on the timer. And then everything with the T is on the top side, and everything with the B is on the bottom side. So a lot of people are having a hard time because I said, what switch is CAM 4T? And they were able to see that switch there, and the problem was was be able to identify the colors. But I'm going to show you two ways we can do that. Let's see if we get to that question yet. So in question number one, how many cams are in a timer? We said there were 16, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Number two, list the switch number and colors for 4T. So just so happened to be the one I just talked about. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over here to cam number four. Here's top. That's going to be black and white to gray. Mm -hmm. But what's the switch number? What number is the actual switch? Number two. Number two, which is right here. Yeah. Not all manufacturers put the colors here for the cam. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like the Maytag one, they just put 4T, but sometimes they just put the switch number. If we look at switch number two, and we went over here to switch number two, one wire coming out is gray, and the other wire going to the other side is black and white. And if you see, those wires are the ones that are the same as the chart. Okay, so you see that we can go to the diagram and find those color wires if we can find the switch number. Either they put the switch number of the timer or they put the cam of the timer. Okay, so the answer to... The question, if we went here, list the switch number, which is switch number what? Two. Two. Number two. And the colors of the wire? Top, gray, to violet. See, is it gray to violet or is black, black and white to violet? Black and white. Black with white to violet. Four. Black and black. Black with white okay. to violet. Okay. Go back here again, look. To the top? Yeah, cam 2T is gray and black and white. What did I put? Violet? I'm wrong. It's, it's, it's gray, G-Y, right? It's gray. Yeah, I put, gray. Gray, I put black and white violet should be gray. My problem. Yeah, it's, it's gray, yeah. Gray so, gray, gray, so it's gray, gray to black and white, white, right? Gray to black and white. And the other one is... Sorry, I don't, I don't know where I got the violet from. Can with violet is the next to the bottom. Yeah, my mistake. So that's gray to black and white. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, number four, cam 4T, what is that switch called? Bypass. Bypass. Again, I probably spent a little bit too much time talking about the bypass and having you guys looking for it, but again, I'm just trying to bring that to your attention so you know what, where that bypass switch is and what it does. Purpose of that bypass switch is to uh, provide voltage. to the timer, motor, and drive motor for drain and spin. So the purpose of that is to provide power for the timer motor and the drive motor when the machine's draining and spinning. Increment 41, 42, 43. What speed is the motor in, in these increments? And why do you think it's using those speeds? So let's go take a look at the speeds. Extra, extra 41, 42, and 43 are right here. And I'll use a yellow marker to highlight. Well, I was going to use yellow, but it came out blue. So what we want to do is we want to... Look at the speeds 
But if you look at 41, 42, 43, how many different speeds do we have listed there? I have two, three. three. We have three different speeds going on in those increments, right? Yeah. Right. So why the three different speeds? That's why, my, that's why I put that question there. Why did it go low, high, then medium? Because I think it's the cyclic in the delicate clothes. You don't want to. Okay, so it's delicate clothes. So when we agitate, agitate slow. is the same as wash. The agitator is going to go back and forth. And if we agitate on a high speed, we could damage clothes. They're like, they're like you know, uh, evening wear that people would have or, or something like that. We have to r run it at a lower speed because a higher agitation would just rip close apart. Why do we go drain high then? Why can't we just keep it on low speed and go to drain now? It doesn't affect the clothes, but you can do it quickly. It's what? It doesn't affect the clothes, it's just draining water. Yeah, but on a low speed, the pump is directly on this model mounted to the main motor. Where some pumps on some washing machines, especially front loaders, that the pump has got its own motor. Okay, but on a lot of the top loader machines, the motor drives the pump without the pump itself having its own motor. The main motor that drives the transmission is the motor that drives the motor for spin and also drives the pump. So if we run the motor at a low speed while we're trying to drain the water, we might not be able to drain out the machine sufficiently. Now while we are spinning, it's still draining. Does anybody know? How many gallons per minute that an average washing machine will pump out? Well, this is some of the older ones. Some of the newer ones I don't know now, but the older machines used to pump up to 17 gallons per minute. Okay? Well, each one of these increments uh, are, this one I think says 171 seconds long. That's almost three minute cycle, right? So when it agitates low, it's only one increment, but it's going to agitate for three minutes. But when we drain on high, we're going to drain for three minutes. If I pump out 17 gallons per minute, I can almost get 51 gallons of water out in that three minute period. And most washing machines don't handle 50 gallons of water. The older machines were like 20 to 30 gallons, like on a, on a, on a full tub. I've never really seen like a 30 gallon, but they hold a lot of water, so that machine running at a low speed may not run fast enough to get the water out. So we could have a problem if we're running on a low speed where the machine is not getting all the water out and the clothes are sitting in a puddle of water at the end of the cycle. And then spin on medium is that if we spin on high, some delicate clothing could, could a couple things could happen to it. One. We can have excess wrinkles in the clothes. Two, some of these machines, they spin at such high RPMs that you know that the washing machine has an outer tub like this, and then inside the outer tub, we have the spinning basket with all the holes. So when we fill up with water, when we fill up with water here, the water fills up this high but it's the outer tub that holds all the water. Whether it's front load or it's top load, the outer tank is what holds the water. And all these holes in the spin basket now. Somebody hit Yeah, somebody hit the basket. I'm in a lecture. Come back in about an hour. So, anyways, if we're spinning at too high of RPM, the clothes are going to get stuck to the basket, but even some of the material of the clothes might stick through the holes. So when you pick it up, it looks like it went to a cheese grater because it's got a bunch of dimples on it. So certain types of clothes, we cannot spin at a high RPM. We have to spin them at a medium or a slower RPM. Now we spin to get the water, to extract the water out of the clothes, because when we throw the clothes in the dryer, they can't be dripping wet when we throw them in the dryer. If they're that wet, the drum's too heavy, the dryer can't turn, it's gonna break the belt, okay? And it's gonna take forever to dry the clothes. 
So we want a machine to spin properly so that the clothes are not soaking wet. They're gonna be wet, of course, but the more water we can get out, the more energy we will save because we don't need to run the dryer extra time to get that water out. So these newer front load machines, you know, when they first came out, they were spinning six, 800 revolutions per minute. Some of these washers now are 1,200 to almost 1,400. I don't think I've seen one that high, wow. but 1,200 revolutions per minute. Now, if you break that down, I think it comes to like, I don't know, like five per second or something like that. I think five, that's, that would be 300, right? So, I, I, 1,200 would be what, how many? 25 times, 20 times a, a second? That's a lot. So certain clothes, you can't spin too high a spin because you'll deform the clothes, okay? So the three speeds, low agitate, drain high, mix, spin medium, this is a three speed machine, okay? So any questions on that? Did I explain it so-so, I guess? Let's go to the next question. Uh, I, I'm not gonna write down the answers, too much to write. How many times and in what increments would you find a half tub drain? So we're gonna go to the chart, and we're looking for something here that says half tub drain, right here. Yeah. All right, how many times do you see it on the whole chart? Once. Once. What increment is that? 21. It's 21 is the increment. What is a half tub drain? Didn't look at it. Well, it's, it's what the words say. If I said half tub drain, what do you think I'm talking about? If I'm gonna drain half the tub, yeah. right? It's gonna, it's gonna be this full, but it's only gonna be half full when I drain. Now, if I'm, if I'm three quarters full in a half tub, it's even lower than half a tub, right? It, it does it by time. It doesn't do it by anything else. But what do you think a half tub drain is? Half tub drain is in permanent press, and the name of the clothes are permanent press. I've talked about it before. Anybody remember what I talked about when I said the clothes are permanent press clothes? Nobody remembers? All right. Remember I talked about this shirt, the top of my shirt has a seam where they sewed it together, but the sleeve is also sewn on here. Now, men don't usually have permanent press clothing. It's usually women's type of clothing. It's more delicate clothing, but the material's made without a seam, like certain dresses and stuff like that. But they have a bend in the material, so it goes around your shoulder, okay? This is created from the seams that they put on there. But permanent press is that when they first make it, the, sh the sleeves are like this, okay? And then they put it over like a mannequin, and they heat it, and the materials made out of resin materials, like, like, like rubbery, plastic type materials, and they form it around a mannequin with heat, and then they cool it down, now it retains that shape. So that what is permanent press. It's, it's been pressed permanently into this shape, but it was done through heat. Well, when you wash clothes in warm or hot water, and then if you're spinning them at a high spin speed, what do you think could happen? The sleeve's gonna go back out like this when you're done with your clothes. So what they do here is a half tub drain causes the machine to start to drain out the water. It gets about halfway, a little bit below halfway, depending on how high your level is, and it stops. And it usually sits there a couple of minutes, and it might even shoot a little bit of cold water. If we find the rinse here, the rinse, look, it's energized right here. Um, I was looking for a cold water here, one second. They don't actually specify hot or cold water. But the rinse here usually fills with cold water. So it'll half tub drain. It might shoot a little bit of cold water in there, but it lets the clothes sit and cool down a little bit before we go into spin. So we don't deform the clothes. And that's what a half tub drain is. That okay. may be your 12 then, 
because on the diagram you have, like at the bottom of the diagram here, the other switch you said we were wondering, I was wondering why is the side directly to the close out. Which one are you talking about? Here? This one here? 12, yes. 12. Cam number 12 is for rinse and cam number 11 is for wash. So that's, I was wondering if that's where you get that because possibly cold water going in on the aqueduct. Well, that they force cold water, but depending on, and, and I cut off the temperature selector switch here, if I closed A and B, no matter which cycle, what temperature water am I going to get if I close A and B? You're going to get it. So it's, Is it warm? It's going to be warm water, water because warm. I'm energizing the hot and the cold. Right. Right. But it's going to be warm water for wash and warm water for rinse. rinse. Right. Most machines, I've only seen it on one or two machines in 40 years, have 99% of them have cold water rinse, period. A few have warm water rinse. I've only seen one or so that might have a hot water rinse. Mm -hmm. We really don't want to rinse with hot water because not only can it cause shrinkage or damage of clothing, but also if we run those clothes in real hot water and spin them, have you ever taken the clothes out of a washing machine at the end of the cycle? They're all twisted and mangled and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, if I used hot water and they were twisted and mangled, even if I hung them on a clothesline, they're gonna have wrinkles everywhere. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they force cold water on 90% of the rinses and then warm on some of the others because it'll reduce wrinkles because not everybody has a dryer. Most of us do now. But if you went back 30 or 40 years, everybody had a clothesline in the backyard. Mm -hmm. you, you had a clothesline? Yeah. I had a clothesline. Yeah, clothesline. I hated it because down here in South Florida, you put them up and 20 minutes later, beautiful sky and it starts raining, right? <laughs> so you're out there trying to get the clothes off the clothesline to gather rain. But the cold water at number 12 was to at least ensure that we're going to get cold water during the final cycle no matter what the customer selects here, okay? But if I select this, even if 12 closes, this is always gonna get power. So it's gonna force here. But if a customer chose hot, cold, just by looking at this diagram, what switches will be closed if a customer put hot wash, oh, I'm sorry, hot wash, cold rinse? What, what? A, B, and C, what switches would be closed if a customer chose hot wash, cold rinse? C, I mean. Hot, Well, on your chart, it's already there, isn't it? C. Down here? Yeah. A, A, C. It's here, look. Yeah, hot C, wash, right. cold rinse. C, C, yeah. C, 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 W, C, C w, w, right? W, w. But yeah. C is yeah. the only one closed if I chose H, C, right? Yeah. So if you look here, C. C is the only one closed because I don't even use a temperature selector switch for rinse. I just close timer switch 12 mm -hmm. for rinse. Doesn't matter what that is because 11 is open and I can't get power to the hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so under, and, and this is important because understanding the cycles, I, I knew what switch was closed in that timer switch based on whether it's going to be a wash or rinse or, or what the what machine's going to do. Understanding the cycles, and that's why I said, I'm going to go over the answers, but I want to talk a little bit more about the cycles and the operation, okay? And I do have some other things I want to cover too. So, we go here. How many times are you going to find a drain? Well, one time, permanent press, increment 21, right? Yes. 21. Number 21. What cycle is switch 14 closed? And why are there two number 14s? Rinse, rinse, bypass. 15, five, five, Okay, I'm going to show you guys something real quick before I go into that answer. Uh, I think it's this one here. So we're talking about the Whirlpool direct drive washer, but this diagram is the belt drive washer. 
And you're like, well, why, what do I care about that one? <laughs> but there's something I want to point out about here. Okay. So we said switch number 14. Can you find switch number 14 on this diagram? It's there, you just gotta look, be look a little bit. Well, it's all the way to the bottom left. Should be feeding the start switch. That's like right. that number 12, right? right. Oh, number 12 is right here, right? 14. Yeah, 14. And it's to cold? Right. Yeah. 14 is right there, and 14 is for what? Spin. A solenoid on the transmission for spin. Right. Yeah. What's number 7? 7 is. Mm. Agitate the sol solenoid. Agitate solenoid on the transmission. We had a motor to speed. But if we wanted to agitate, we energized this solenoid, and that solenoid shifted a gear in the transmission. If we wanted to spin, we energized this one and not that one, and it shifted something on the transmission called a brake and clutch assembly. Okay? But the point is, is that when Whirlpool had this machine, they built this machine, I don't know, in the 50s, I think it's that far back. And it was a great machine. But they had to upgrade the machine technology-wise, and the newer direct drive washer, when I was in school in 1980, 1980 and 81, they had a washer called the Design 2000 washer. That's 20 years later. And you know, it was the direct drive washer, which came out in the 90s. So it was designed way before it ever came out. It just, they ran it through tests before they dispensed it. But the point I was getting at, if you look at your diagram and look at the diagram, the water level switch is here. The common terminal is violet, the top is tan, and the bottom is pink. Look at your water level switch. Is the common violet top and tan, bottom pink? If we go to the, you know, I can put them side by side so we can look at them together. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. So if bottom I put this. Pink, the top is violet, it's tan. Okay, so this is this one. But it's just something I want to show you guys again. Why, why does it not go full screen? Okay. I have to move this out of the way. I know it's going to be a little hard for you to see, but you guys have the diagram. But 14 here is for spin. Yeah. Well, 14 is here because we no longer have solenoids on our transmission. The way we spin and we agitate is through cam 14 and 7. 7 was what on the other diagram? 7 was solenoid. agitate. Solenoid. 7 on here, if we go back to the chart and we look at switch number 7 right here, what does it say? Agitate. And we have another number 7 here somewhere. I think it might be a little bit over there, cut off the screen. Oh, here it is right here. Here's the other sevens, agitate. Number 14 is spin. Number 14 is spin. So this is what Whirlpool did. And I commend them, commend them, not condemn, commend them for it, is that technicians like me who worked on these Whirlpool belt drive machines for so many years, I knew, I could tell you any switch on there and the number that switch is, I can tell you the color wires those switches are, I could draw that whole diagram off the top of my head. Now they redesigned the washer to the direct drive. Instead of putting all new colors and all new switch numbers and everything else, even though that on the direct drive, the direct drive 7 and 14 went directly to the motor and the others went to, to transmission, 14 was spin and 7 was agitate. They changed the direction that the motor was going to run. Now, it's not something for you guys just coming straight out because you probably never ever see a belt drive Whirlpool washer, but you can see how they, they copied a lot of the numbers. Number two, what, what's number two on here? Yeah. What was number two? Do you guys remember what number two is? Bypass. Bypass, right? Bypass, yeah. But here's our water level switch. Bypass. Number two is here. It, number two is bypassing Bypass. the water level switch. You see that? Number 16 is for the timer motor. This one doesn't really have a 16 because they use lid switch there. But five and six, number six and number five. Five is going to the high speed in the number. Number six is going to low and medium. Number six is low. 
Orange. If we look here, what color is coming off of number six? Orange. Orange. What color is coming off of number five? Blue. blue. Look at number five is blue. Look at the agitate. What color is this? Yellow. Yellow. And look at the spin. What color is that? Red. If we go to these timer switches, 14 and 7, we got red over here and we got yellow over here. So they used a lot of the same colors, even the water valve, the hot and cold. Brown and red is hot, and yellow and red is cold. Well, if I went over here, brown and red is hot, yellow and red is cold. So again, I'm just trying to point it out just so you can see how there are similarities. Even though the function of the machine as far as the mechanics, like the transmission, that this machine, the motor is not reversible, this machine is the motor is reversible. But if we looked at the timer chart, as far as the function, fill, agitate, spin, drain. If we go back to, let me just maximize this one now. We go back to this chart here, that if you look at regular heavy, almost everything here is on high. So when we're doing regular heavy, we're talking about jeans, cotton t-shirts, towels, stuff that, heck, we're just going to throw it in there, we're going to wash it, and that's it. And we want it on high because we want to get as clean as we possibly can. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if we look at permanent press, we have, a lot, we have some high, but that's usually like drain. There's a little agitate high, but drain high but the spins are like medium because we're doing permanent press close. Okay? Well, if we look at the delicate, the drain's on high, but what's my agitate? Low. Okay, what's my spin? Medium. Now, hand washables, again, spin medium or agitate low. So on some machines, you might have everything on low, spin on low and everything else. But they realize that if we spin some stuff on low, it may not get all the water out. So let's, let's run it at a medium, but not a high. Okay? That's the main difference from normal to permanent press to delicate, is the speed that the motor runs and something like that half-tub drain that I pointed out to you. Other than that, every cycle fills with water, drains with water, spins. They do the same function. It is the speed at which they do it that is the main difference from all those cycles. Unless you have customer options like temperature, water level, all that stuff is user defined by pressing buttons or turning the dial, okay? Let's go ahead and go to... Um, if the washer was, okay, the purpose of number 12 switch, I think we just talked about that either. That was the rinse, right? Yeah. Yeah, we already, I already gave you the answer to that while talking about something else. So number 12 is rinse, and number 14's was spin, the motor, okay? If the washer was set to the medium speed, wash, what two windings would be energized to get the motor running at first startup? So we go over here to the diagram and they're saying if I want to wash this, I got to energize the start for wash, but I want to run for medium. So that means I'm going to go through switch number six because switch number five is only high. But watch, when I come through here right now, the centrifugal switch is connected orange to blue, so it's going to send power to what? What am I going to send power to? The high, winding. The high, speed. The, the high speed. It doesn't matter whether the customer selects low, medium, or high to start a multiple speed motor. We're always going to use the start winding and the high speed winding to get the motor going. Remember, it takes a lot for just the motor on its own to get spinning. But imagine a washing machine filled with water to drain and to spin or a transmission trying to create this agitator to move back and forth, but the customer has all these clothes in there jammed up against the agitator. 
So we want to be able to have an extra starting torque, and that's why we're starting this machine on high. And then what happens, if we look, we start it on high, once it gets up to speed, the centrifugal switch closes orange to VW from orange to blue, and then depending on whether the timer selects medium or high, number 16 will close, and now we'll run off of the medium. Okay? Now, also in doing so, when this switch is here, we start it on high, this power back flows this way, and if we're on spin, we're gonna go through 14, like this, and out. But notice, once we get this machine to start up, this switch, oh, I'm sorry, I thought I hit the eraser there. This switch opens, and in doing so, it disengages the start one in the high speed, shifts just to the medium speed, but it no longer sends power to the start one. And so not only are we shifting from high to medium, we're turning the start winding off. As soon as the motor gets up to speed, we disengage the start one. Okay? Now, if y'all have any questions, don't hesitate to, you know, say, hey, wait a minute. Um, TSC stands for what, and what switches be closed when the customer selects warm, warm? Temperature switch chart and TV. Let's uh, go here. TSC says temperature switch chart? Yeah, that's what it says on here. Where does it say that? Where in the legend? Chart, chart. TSC, yeah. In the legend, yes. The answer's in the legend here. I don't have it up on the screen, but you have here a legend in the upper le left hand corner. And TSC, this is temperature switch chart, and that's the TSC chart on the bottom yeah. right here, okay? And so the other part of the question was what? Um, which switches would be closed when the customer selects warm, warm? And that's 2B. No, that's A, B, and C. Okay, warm, warm. That's A, B, and C in this switch. So warm, warm. Actually, A, B, and C would be closed yeah, in the warm yeah, A, B, and C. All yeah. three of them would be closed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why are all three closed? Because medium, cold, and hot to make warm. Yeah, but watch. If I close, if I close B and A, right? No matter what the timer does, I'm sending power to both valves without even going through a timer switch, right? I could have just used B and A. Mm -hmm. But the reason why they did that is so for wash, this would get power and that would get power through there. But when we go to rinse, 11's not closed. So yes, this will energize both here, but we close number 12 to confirm that we get that cold water coming in. But that's why they closed all three switches in that. Okay? We did that one. Next question. What cycle and machine function is 36? Is it drain? So if we go here, let's find 36. The first answer is what? Drain. No. The delicate. first question is what cycle? Cycle is delicate. The, function the is cycle drain. is delicate. Yeah. The function is drain hot. Yeah. And here it says machine function. These are the cycles here. The function is telling you what actually the machine is doing at that point in time. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the answer is delicate mm -hmm. and drain hot. Okay? List the switches that are closed in this increment. So we go back to 36, and the switches are closed is this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So we go up here, switch number three, five, 14, 14, 
And and I didn't even have to look down for the one. I know if one 14's closed, the other one's closed. Mm -hmm. They're always closed together for spin. If one seven's closed, mm -hmm. the other seven's closed. So 14, 14. Then we go uh, to here, which is two, the bypass. Bypass always closed in drain and spin. So 14's closed, what are we gonna find? Two is also two, closed. Yeah. Yeah. So we go over here, it's 15, 15 and 11. 11, and that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, now I have a question. Yes, sir. On, the, on this diagram key, it shows an X in the box. And you want me to go to the diagram or here? On the, on the, on the, on the, on the timer, timer chart. chart. Yes. If you look at... Um, X in the six, box, six, is, and it may be or may not be closed. Right. What, what, why? If you find the switch closed, don't worry about it. You're, there's no way, no way it is possible for both of these switches to be closed at the same time. Why? Because they're both on the same cam and the switch can either go top of cam or bottom of cam. There's no way in a timer all three can be closed. And if both of these are closed at the same time, that means all three would be touching at the same time. It's not possible. But if you happen to find one of them closed at that moment in time, it, it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be wrong. Okay? Why they draw that that way, I can't answer. But they're just saying it may or may not be closed. If it is closed, don't worry about it. And part of the reason is, I think, is when you make... You saw that move by itself too? Yeah. Your backpack, the, the shoulder strap just moved by itself <laughs> like there was a ghost or something. Okay, uh, so anyways, it's very difficult to create this physical timer with the cams and have them 100% line up with that paper chart. So it may be a, a slight degree off on that cam and the switch may be still physically closed when it should be open or something like that. So that's why they're saying may or may not be closed, but you're gonna have to take that. In. If it's closed, it's all right. If it's not closed, it's all right. That's the only thing I could tell you. Okay? The next question. Um, to draw a wavy line, so you're all gonna have to tell me what switches are closed again. I do know it was switch number 14. Yeah. I do know the bypass. What speed was it, high or low? I think it was switch number six, right? No. So you got 11, 15, 2. All right, 11, 15. 15, where, I don't even know where 15 is. All right, let me uh, clear this because I'm too high up and I can't see the top of the diagram here. So, I go here, I know number two is closed. I know number 11. I know both number 14s. I do need to feed five and my go. motor. This is five? Yeah. 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 And what else? Three. Three? Three? Mm -hmm. It says not used. Anyways, what else? That's it, 15. Aside from 15. Okay. But I, I don't see 15. You see 15 on the diagram? I couldn't find you. I couldn't find it either. Not, not a diagram. And, and one thing you got to know is that they make these diagrams of many different machines. So they could just be they forgot to remove it or something. I don't know. So what they want you to do is draw a wavy line through the highlighted circuit. I'm not going to draw a wavy line. I'll just draw a sound line. This is a push pull knob here on the timer. We're going to go through and feed the timer motor for neutral. We're going to come here, and I'm just going to do the motor running. I'm not going to do the start winding, but that's the motor running. And number 10 is open, so even though number 11 is closed, there is no power going down there at that time. Now, if you did do the start winding, you would come down here. It went like this. It went out and out like that if you did the start winding. But otherwise, that is the circuit that you were supposed to draw. Any questions? No? Okay.
here's some technical stuff now. Let's see how, how good you guys are getting. Washer will not wash in the delicate cycle, but it does complete the final spin. So what I mean there is that the, the washer gets to the wash portion of the cycle and it's not washing. But what I'm saying is the timer is still advancing and it'll go to spin and drain the water out and everything. So what's the problem? First of, wait, wait, first of all, by me telling you it spins, what does that mean? We talked a little bit about it the other day. It means the motor is good. The motor is good because if the motor, we have to start on high, and no matter whether we're spinning or we're agitating, we use both those windings. So if it works on spin and not wash, it's not the motor. And I said the timer's advancing, right? So even if it's on spin, the timer's advancing, right? Hmm, okay, so we have to probably feed, let's go through five and let's feed the motor. So that's that, but that's for spin, but it's not washing. Hmm. So I would, we'll put agitate and see if it can start feed those switches. Well, you know, I, I thought about the problem and I see that my idea my answer would have been wrong but also right if you put it in spin it would spin but it wouldn't it, it wouldn't it would fill and then stop it wouldn't it wouldn't advance to the spin I wrote it down wrong and what I was meaning is that the machine would fill up a water and then the water level switch was supposed to go up here so that the motor and timer can run but V to T was not closing, but it was opening here so the water valves would shut off and not overflow the washer. Mm -hmm. And so I did word it wrong, and that it was supposed to be that it would fill up and do nothing, but when we go to spin cycle to test it, it would spin and drain. So I sort of worded it wrong. But the answer is the water level switch. Did anybody even guess that? Mm -hmm. I got fill back. Well, not to fill, but it'd be the water level switch itself, so it still would fill. I didn't follow the fill switch. But it, it was, my, my wording was incorrect, so I, I apologize for that one. I make those mistakes all the time. Um, in the permanent press cycle, delicate and, okay, permanent press, delicate hand wash cycles, the motor sometimes will start, then immediately stop and keep doing that until the overload trips. So what's happening is that you start the motor, you start the cycle, even if it's on spin in these cycles, and it starts up and then immediately it dies. And it starts up and the motor dies. And it happens like this. What do you think the problem is? Bad motor. Well, what's wrong with the motor? Don't say bad motor unless you got an answer to the problem. It could be it's not getting uh Voltage. What was the cycle? Yeah, the permanent press. Permanent press, delicate, hand wash. Permanent press, delicate, huh? Mm -hmm. And in that spin cycle, what speed is that motor on? Medium. Medium. It's on medium on both on most of them, right? On those three cycles, permanent mm -hmm. press, yeah. delicate, whatever. It's medium spin. Yeah. But on the normal, it's high speed spin, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is the motor is getting power here. And when it gets up to speed, the centrifugal switch is supposed to be the one that shifts it from high to low. So on normal, this is the way the motor gets power. But on permanent press and delicate, it comes this way and feeds the motor. But once it gets up to speed, the centrifugal switch is supposed to come here. So it's either a bad winding in the motor or centrifugal switch orange to violet white is not closing. And I'm going to tell you that that was a problem they had years ago at the Skills USA competition. They had this exact type of washer, and the motor's going ching 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 ching, like it would start and then die, start then die, start then die, and it was happening that fast. And what's happening is it was starting on high and it was shifting to low, and the low wouldn't work. It was either the centrifugal switch or the winding, and it turned out to be a centrifugal switch. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully, my guy Tony 
Diogenes Della Torre, I'll tell you his name. You'll probably say, hey, don't use my name. I ain't gonna tell you where he's working. He won first place in the National Skills USA competition in 1993. Was my first student ever to win first place. I'm gonna tell you a little story behind it. Is that the judges in the competition that year made a mistake. They had all the students in the competition, the national competition, this was in G GE's headquarters in Louisville, Kentucky at the time. And they said, guys, we got this type of washer, and this is what the washer's doing. We got this dryer, and this is what the dryer's doing. Now, all the students competing are sitting there with all their teachers at the national conference. Well, what I do every year is when I go to competition is I bring diagrams like this. I, I don't know what machines are going to have at the contest prior to, so I bring a bunch of different diagrams, and we just discuss, hey, if this machine don't drain, don't spin like what we're doing now, just to get them to th to think about it but they told us it's a direct drive washer and this is what it's doing so we talked to the students and the guy who taught me was had the high school kid for the competition I had the adult for the competition we both won first place and that was the problem and well we discussed well what could cause it well either the low speed in the motor because it wasn't three speed it was high and low or the centrifugal switch so he goes to the machine sees the problem Goes right to the motor, checks it out, finds out centrifugal switch is bad, he's done. Well, our students from Miami took first place in the high school and the adult vision. Next year, both of us happen to be at the national contest again, and it happens to be in Louisville, and we're in a GE factory. We said, we're not gonna tell you guys what the machines are and the problems, because we know you guys from Florida. <laughs> they threw us under the bus, but it's like, Every teacher and every student are all sitting in the same room. If I didn't sit down and discuss possible problems and scenarios with my student, and someone else did, I'm not cheating. I didn't go, you guys volunteered the information. So, um, Evelio took first place, and they were talking to this guy, and he says, yeah, but I was the first one. And we told him, yeah, but you had help. And, He'll deny it up and down. I was the one that still troubleshotted, he says. So I competed in 83 and only got third place in national. So anyways, that's just a little fun story because even to this day, he's proud that he got his first place. But we say, hey, you got there because of me. <laughs> it was fun. Um, so anyways, uh, the difference is that the... Uh, Overload is going to trip if the motor is trying to start and stop too many times. It's going to cause the motor to overheat mm -hmm. and possibly cut off on the overload. Okay. Now, another problem that they didn't put in there, and I'll just tell you guys the problem. Same direct drive washer. It was when I competed. And one of the reasons why I screwed up, because if you didn't guess the right answer, you didn't get it right. I guessed the wrong answer. That the washing machine would fill up with water. And it starts agitating. Well, when the washing machine fills up with the water and starts agitating, what stops it from filling and tells it to start agitating? What stops the machine from filling and tells it to start to agitate? I mean, the, 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 the water level switch. So here was the problem. Direct drive washer, the same machine. Remember, this is back... 1983 okay the machine filled with water started agitating after about a minute or two of agitating it stopped agitating and started filling again well what happened is the water level switch was in full now the water level switch dropped to here and started filling again the motor stopped but what they did is that on the side of your tank and I'll give you a little example There's your washing machine tub, and then the basket's inside, and then your agitator's here, right? On the side of your tub, something called an air dome, and there's a plastic hose that runs all the way up to the water level switch up here. So as the machine starts to fill with water, that water wants to go up that hose up to the switch, but just like if you took a cup upside down in the sink and pushed it down, air would be trapped in that cup. The deeper I would go, the increased pressure that would appear in that cup. Mm -hmm. So as water started to fill up, it'd want to go in here, but it only gets about halfway 
because the opening's at the very bottom, but the air inside will be trapped all the way up to here. And it'll, the more water I put in, the increased pressure I would put on that hose, and that's how that switch switches over, okay? So when you're checking water level switches, I have a hose there, and you put your hand, like put the hose in your hand and put your hand on your mouth so you're not putting the hose in your mouth, because who knows before you or all the dirt on it. So you put your hand around it and go like that, and you can cycle some of these switches. Now the thing was, is they took a needle and put a little hole in the hose. <laughs> so as it filled up, it had enough pressure to cycle the switch. But after a few minutes of operating, the air would leak out this hose and the water level switch would go back to empty position and no matter how much water came in the machine, it would never go back to the full position because there's not enough air in here to cycle the switch. Well, they only did it that one year and the reason why is because if the judge wasn't paying attention, the student wasn't paying attention, the machine would overflow and water was everywhere and it made a mess. Mm -hmm. And they pulled that, that machine out of the contest because now the, war, the, the floor is soaking wet and students can't be on the floor and the wet floor working and that's what happened. So that's not a problem we had in, the, in this assignment but that was just another scenario of what we have. Okay, the washer will fill and wash and when draining everything stops and the unit will no longer Complete the draining cycle. Mm -hmm. The water pump? Hmm? The um, drain? Actually, the answer was the very first thing I talked about today. The timer. It said it doesn't advance. It doesn't finish the cycle. So the timer motor can't be running. Okay, but... That's not the timer motor because the drive, even if the timer motor was dead, the drive motor would still run and spin. I said it started draining and it stopped before it completely drained and the timer didn't advance. So the bypass is. The bypass on this one would be the bypass or the lid switch because what happens when we first go in the drain, the machine is full of water. So the motor and the timer are gonna run when it first goes into the spin cycle. But as it starts spinning, the water is going low, we have less pressure on the switch. This switch opens up, and now the only way the timer and the motor can operate is if power goes around that switch. So, if these two switches don't operate, that's what's gonna happen. So you see why I'm pointing out the bypass and the type of problem that may happen. But before I check the timer, what would I check? There's one other thing I circled there. The lid the switch. Lid switch. Yeah. On this machine. On some of the direct drives, they put the lid switch on the back end of the motor, okay? And I think I showed you the other diagram that the timer went through the overload in the motor too, but if the lid switch was on the neutral side of the motor, it would do the same problem. But it wouldn't agitate either if the lid switch was here and the lid switch was bad. But the lid switch is here, it's only for spin because it's next to the bypass. So here's another thing that's important. Where they put the switch, I know what type of problem that switch, if it's not functioning, would happen. If they put it on this side, I know it's only for spin and drain. If they put it here, it's spin or agitate. Mm -hmm. So again, you have to understand these circuits and that's why we went over so many of these mechanical diagrams. I'm hoping after we come back next week, we can go into more electronic machines. Tuesday, I'm gonna have a diagram with actual letters on here, voltage readings and you're gonna tell me what's wrong with the circuit. But Wednesday and Thursday, we're gonna have a few more assignments. I won't lecture next week, but I'm gonna have assignments every day, and I'm gonna give you some homework for the Thanksgiving vacation mm -hmm. that you guys can do, and then we'll have a lecture when we come back that next Tuesday when we come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna cover over what we did on, on next week and your homework assignment. It might be a two-day lecture 
break it up a little bit because it might be too much in one sitting. But anyways, um, going back to the, the chart here, the machine will spin and drain, but will not fill or agitate. If it spins, we know the power comes in through here and feeds the motor and the timer. But it does not fill or the motor don't work during agitation. Well, if it don't fill, the water level switch will never go for agitation, right? Right. But also, if number 10 in the timer is bad, if you look at number 10, number 10 only has to do with the fill. And if number 10 or the water level switch is bad, it will not fill and it will not agitate. You understand that? Hopefully now as you're looking at these charts, you still may have a little bit of a difficulty trying to follow the chart and the diagrams and everything, but we did a lot of diagrams in the past couple of weeks. These diagrams should be a lot easier. We'll see how your homework assignment is, Wayne. <laughs> Any questions? During an entire, during an entire cycle, what, what? isn't there a time when the timer doesn't advance? The only time a timer does not advance is when the machine is filling with water. Every other function of this machine, that timer has to be advancing. It's only during fill that the timer motor will not operate. Which is what I was thinking on question 13. Question 13? Um, that's, said the washer will that's a good fill. question. This way. The washer will fill and wash. When draining, everything will stop and the unit will no longer drain or complete the cycle. So I'm telling you to fill a wash. And I'll tell you, it, it goes into drain, but in the middle of the drain cycle, it stops. And the reason why that happens is that when we start draining, we are providing power to the motor and the timer through the water level switch. But as we start to drain and that water level switch gets low enough with the pressure, it's relying on these bypass switch and the lid switch to continue operating. So the problem has to be number two with the lid switch because I'm telling you, everything's functioning until it starts draining and then it stops in the middle of the drain. Yeah. Now here's one last problem. Mm. You're not going to find that a schematic, but I might as well tell you because you're bound to run into it one day. Customer calls you out. Mm. Says, my machine is filling with water. I turn the machine on and as it fills with water, I could walk away and come back an hour later and water still come in the machine but the timer never advanced. Water still coming in the machine. What's the first question you ask the customer? She turned it on, it started filling. An hour later she came back, it's still letting water in. But the timer hasn't moved, it hasn't done anything else. What's the first question you ask the customer? You're on the phone, you haven't got there yet. You're looking at the work order and you're saying, um, ma'am or sir, uh, can you uh, tell me this? What question do you ask? Did the lid close? No. If, if I turn on a washing machine to fill with water and let it run for an hour, what's gonna happen? Oh, you said run for an hour. No, it's filling oh, for an hour. Oh, okay. It's going to overflow, right? Customer's going to have a flood. Machine don't stop filling. So you ask the customer, you got any water on the floor? And the customer says, no, there's no water on the floor, but it's been filling for an hour. And I got good water pressure. It's not dripping. It's filling. Mm -hmm. So where's the water going? Could it be draining from the hose? What hose? From the back, you know. The drain hose? Yeah. Yes, it could. But the pump and motor is not running. Because the add washer is that, you know how you gotta have it at 30 inches? It if your drain that. hose is lower than a certain yeah. amount of inches, yeah, it's, it, which is, here's your washer. 
Here's your washer. Okay? Okay? And your tank is here. Your drain pipe is here going in the wall. All right? The, the height of that pipe or the height of your hose needs to be higher than the water level in the tank. If the drain hose is this low, gravity would cause it to flow out. Some people take that hose and they connect it to another hose mm -hmm. and they run it in their backyard out into the yard. Mm -hmm. But again, if it's not this high, the water will come in and it'll run right out gravity wise. Mm -hmm. Now not every model will do it, but 90% of them will. And here's another thing. Sometimes people take the drain hose and they stick it in the drain pipe and it is higher than there. But they have a problem. They live in a very old home and they probably have a septic tank or very old plumbing. You know, some of these homes have these galvanized pipes instead of copper now or PVC and the pipes start corroding and breaking down. Trees start to grow roots in them and everything else. So water will leak here because as it's draining, it's backing up mm -hmm. and overflows onto the floor. Mm -hmm. So you know what a customer does? What, is a, what do you think a customer is going to do? They got water leaking on the floor from that pipe. What can I do to stop it from leaking that water? What, what is one tool that every technician should have, no matter whether it's appliance, a mechanic, whatever? What's, what's one thing? Come on. I know you know what it is. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> what is it? What's that one thing? I don't I don't, I don't know. Duct tape. Duct tape. Come on, you say duct tape is for everything, right? So they take duct, duct tape, tape and they tape the pipe so that water don't leak out. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But the problem is, is they create an air block. So what happens, especially if their pipe is starting to back up, the machine will fill up and wash the first cycle, no problem. When it gets to that half tub drain that we talked about earlier, where it's supposed to drain out to half the tub and stop, but if it's airtight here, I create a siphon. So when the motor and pump stop, water's still being siphoned out the machine now because down here it's lower than the water level. And so it sits for only two or three minutes and as it's siphoning, the timer's still advancing. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden the timer says, ah, give us more water now, we're gonna fill back up for rinse, mm -hmm. but it's being siphoned out the back and it'll just sit there and suck out the water and fill the water at the same time and never move on. So that's another reason why the machine could fill with water, not overflow onto the floor, and not advance to the cycle. It's not an electrical problem. It's a mechanical, where they did this. So what I did is I told the customer, you got, you got a, like a, a six penny nail, or whatever they call them nails, and I would stick a nail down in the pipe next to the hose, so it'll, give air so it'll break the siphon. But guess what? Mm -hmm. That causes water to leak out. Mm -hmm. So we have something that y'all probably don't know about. So let me go ahead and find this to show you. What the heck happened here? There we go. Why is my... Uh, let me just open another tab. For some reason, my search was all the way to the left. Uh, washing machines have an anti-siphon kit. Back in the day, the old Maytags were built into the machine. Dang, that's small. Y'all can't see that? <laughs> Come on. I know I'm blind too, but... These are called anti-siphon kits. And you know how the washing machine has a curve going down into the drain pipe? Mm -hmm. Well, you cut that curve. So you hook up the drain hose into the side. Let me see if I can open that up. So you hook up the drain hose into the side of this pipe. And you usually have an arrow pointing down into the machine. You have a piece of hose here, you would you cut off the end of the hose, you put it here, and you put the end you cut off here. And when you do, 
the water comes in and goes into the drain pipe, and now I can tape it to the drain pipe so it don't overflow. You can probably just see a little black little piece sticking out the top. I'm gonna to show you what the top looks like. That's the top looking down. You see the four holes? There's a piece of rubber underneath there and a little 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 pin sticking up like a little rubber like imagine like a golf tee upside down. Okay, it's flat with the little thing sticking up. So when a washer's draining here, if the drain pipes back up, it wants to try to leak out the top, but the rubber pushes up on the holes that don't leak out. When the motor stops, what I say, that the water creates its own siphon, just like when you stick a hose in a gas tank, go, and then you go like this to siphon it out. When it goes to siphon, it sucks air this way, and the air breaks the siphon. So if a customer has old plumbing on their home, and they have the water leaking problem, and you see they duct tape it, this is called an anti-siphon kit, and this will be stalled on the drain, going to the drain pipe in the wall to prevent that from happening. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's about it, unless anybody got any questions. Okay. I think we went over everything today. All right. Thank you. Thank you.